Good uh, evening. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Eckhart for the kind introduction and also for the invitation um, from the WISE uh, initiative to share with, with you uh, about my research. I, I would like to start with mass spectrometry as uh, the detector that we have used for our drug discovery efforts. And then liquid chromatography uh, is a technique that you will see used extensively in my research. And then um, liquid chromatography coupled to mass spectrometry has been considered as an impossible task uh, through the years. And it has been uh, associated with a metaphor that is described in this uh, slide, which uh, basically shows the impossible love between a fish and a bird. So this is the dilemma that of course for um, liquid chromatography and mass spectrometry and how scientists uh, were able to overcome this uh, limitation was by the, um, by the development of a source that you see attached to the MS um, component of this instrument. This is a high resolution mass spectrometer that we use in my laboratory. And um, the research that we do implies the use of this uh, first component, which is a liquid chromatographer that is going to separate compounds and then we send those compounds to a source where the liquid <coughs> is going to pass to a spray, then to is minuscule droplets and then uh, the molecules will be uh, transformed to gas phase so that they can be detected in this detector. And I would like to show you how the mass spectrometry detector functions. And you see this group of coins. Imagine that those are a mixture of compounds. This detector will separate compounds based on their weight and on the amount that is present in that sample. As you see, the quantity or abundance is present in the y-axis of this um, figure. Then the mass spectrometry detector can also fragment molecules in order to provide us with information related to the structure. As you notice, the mass spectrometer can sort molecules then those molecules can be sent to a fragmentation chamber where the molecules are broken in pieces and then those pieces can allow us to go back and establish the structure of a compound of interest. And I would like to add to um, what I have mentioned related to mass spectrometry, the fact that nature has been very gracious providing a number of bioactive molecules that have become drugs that are available to treat diseases. And among small molecules that have been approved by FDA between the years 1981 and 2014, 60% uh, come from natural sources. 33% are natural products and 27% are synthetic compounds that have been inspired by molecules from uh, natural origin. Then, this is one example that is, uh, is being obtained from a tree from the United States, from the West Coast. It's called Pacific U, and this is the source of Paclitaxel. It's an anti-cancer compound that is used to treat breast cancer, and is currently used uh, clinically in, in various uh, countries. So I would like now to talk about my own research and how we have used the mass spectrometry. We do biological evaluation of natural products, but we have developed a series of bioassays that use the mass spectrometry as a detector. And in this case, we selected a target that is here, is an enzyme uh, from mycobacterium tuberculosis and it's called chikimid kinase, and this enzyme catalyzes a reaction that phosphorylates this uh, intermediate called chikimate 
is a reaction in the shikimic pathway, and um, this assay is, going, is following the shikimic triphosphate, which is the end product of this reaction. And then, with this assay that we developed in collaboration with Dr. Douglas Whitwing from the Department of Chemistry and Biochemistry, we were able um, to profile the mechanism of inhibition of mansamine alkaloids. Alkaloids from isolated from a sponge called uh, haliclona. And this uh, process of isolation was done by a collaborator, uh, Dr. Mark Hammond from uh, Medical University of South Carolina. And we identified that these are inhibitors of mycobacterium chikimid kinase, and the most active compounds are mansamine A and cyclohexamino mansamine A. Then we have another example, ilimaquinone is another compound isolated from another sponge and this compound binds irreversibly to shikimic kinase and we have been able to identify the sites in the enzyme where this ilimaquinone is binding. For instance, it's binding to serine 77 as well as tyrosine 11. So these molecules are important because they are um, chemical props that can allow us to understand how the shikimic pathway can be influenced in order um, to um, affect the growth of mycobacterium tuberculosis, which is the agent that causes tuberculosis in humans. After that, I would like to say that we do also identification and structural elucidation of bioactive natural products in extracts. And this endeavor has been, um, has been described as a process where someone is finding a needle in a haystack. It's a very complex pro process and then we are able to do that by uh, the use of liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry. So this is the uh, approach that is used in my laboratory, first of all, to find those compounds that are known. We generate crude extracts of different natural sources. We do LCMS, MS analysis, trying to find the metabolites that, uh, that are present either in plants, in fungi, in marine organisms, and then we search for known compounds in databases along with the chemotaxonomy of the source of origin of those compounds, and then rapidly we are able to identify the major known compounds of those extracts. So here is an example where if the compound is a new compound, we have to do isolation of that compound and then establish the structure. And it, here, what we have is a polyketide, it's called enantine Q. And this compound inhibits mycobacterium chikimid kinase, and it's a compound that was isolated from an endophyte that grows in a grass called Hordium sativum. This endophyte was collected in Egypt, and we uh, were able to, to have a collaboration with a group in that country in order to identify this uh, polyketide. Then um, I would like also uh, to show you another area of interest, which is botanical dietary supplements. And I would like to know uh, who among you has used botanical dietary supplements so far? So we see some of the uh, uh, members of this audience who have tried that. So those products um, have, have important qualities, particularly because they are very complex chemically. And in my laboratory, we have interest in the quality and the safety of these products. In terms of quality, we have developed LCMS-based uh, methods that can allow us 
to um, determine the quality of these uh, products from the starting materials, which are basically the plants, through uh, the process until those botanical dietary supplements are sold over the counter. Here I have the example of acai. You may have seen these products over the counter in pharmacies locally. And on top you will see Euterpe oleracea. It's the scientific name of that plant. It's a plant endemic in Brazil and is uh, used traditionally there as a food and also to treat certain uh, diseases. So we studied uh, the chemical composition of Euterpe oleracea as well as this uh, botanical dietary supplement and then we have found a variety of compounds and the compounds that we are listing in this slide are compounds that are responsible for the antioxidant properties of these acai berries. Another area is safety. So in my laboratory we are interested in knowing how we can predict botanical dietary supplement anti-cancer drug interactions. We know that in the population uh, people tend to take dietary supplements in, um, in addition or in combination with current treatments for various diseases. So we have found that it's important to do uh, some predictions of this type because the use of the concomitant use of these products with drugs will end in lowering the efficacy of the current treatments or increasing the toxicity of certain drugs. And we have used this approach to test the extracts of acai and maca, these two products, you, you can see them in, in the supermarket, in juices, a part of uh, some food um, formulations. And then we develop the use of this device that mimic the absorption in the intestine of chemicals in humans. And we were able to find those compounds that can cross the intestinal membrane by the use of the mass spectrometry. And then we tested those compounds for their interference with liver enzymes. And why this is important? Because if a compound inhibit or induce liver enzymes will produce um, adverse effects or will produce some impact on the efficacy of a treatment. So what we um, found is that there are compounds in botanicals, for instance in acai, that may interfere with these liver enzymes. And at this moment we are trying to study the mechanisms by which these compounds are interfering with those liver enzymes. And what is important to take from this uh, particular study that has a more a expanded implication is the fact that there is very little information on the safety of the use of botanical dietary supplements and anti-cancer drugs. And Believe it or not, we have a publication also that indicates that among cancer patients there is a, a stable use of botanical dietary supplements in comparison to population that do not suffer of cancer. So it's important that we continue this work and um, I would like at this moment uh, to indicate that um, my research in natural products started um, years ago when I was uh, doing my undergraduate research in the School of Pharmacy at the University of Panama. And I was um, motivated by um, the biological diversity and how this biological diversity can be used to generate 
molecules that can help to treat diseases. And as you have seen in my work uh, presented here with some examples um, over the last 10 years, you will notice that my lab has focused on getting uh, some assays that are um, relying on the mass spectrometry to find molecules against uh, tuberculosis, against malaria. We have worked extensively in how we can, one can do a structural elucidation of um, natural products in complex mixtures because it's very um, challenging to do this work and come out with uh, an structure proposed um, as a mixture. And then in the third case is how we are using the mass spectrometry to make sure that the products that are taken by the population over the counter have the appropriate quality and also they are safe to be used in combination with other products. So, and I would like to say that those who are students here, I, it's important that you can follow those aspects of the science that make you dream to, to do important things. As you notice uh, during the, my introduction of the metaphor between the impossible love between the fish and the bird. So through science, one was able to uh, overcome this, generating an ion source that allow ionization of molecules that can be detected by mass spectrometry. And with this, I would like to acknowledge my current students, one of them here, uh, Ellie, and um, current passes uh, graduate students, undergraduate students who have who work very hard also in my laboratory, excellent collaborators as Dr. Douglas Goodwin from chemistry, then uh, collaborators from the School of Pharmacy, Jinjin Kian, Dr. Hansen, Dr. Satya Pondukula, who has helping us uh, in elaborating this predictive model of uh, botanical dietary supplements, anti-cancer drug interactions, and the funding agencies that have supported this research. Thank you.